Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. Today we're going to take a quick talk about your quiver setup here and how it goes on your bow, some of that kind of stuff, some, some details in this. Um, but there are a couple things I can show you in here. First of all, um, the key thing we want to note is where you put your quiver on your bow. Okay, this is important, especially for your longbow guys. Uh, recurve guys, uh, especially you too. You want to slide your quiver up or however you're doing it, but you need, if you are mounting a quiver onto your bow, a strap-on or a slide-on, make sure you get it up into the fade-outs, where it's on the fade-out. See how the dark color continues up? That's your fade-out from your riser. See how the dark color goes and fades? This is a non-flexing part of the bow. This is a non-flexing part of the bow. You want your quiver on that non-flexing part so that it's not going to change your uh, the, um, the way your bow handles that. You're not going to get the vibration. Uh, you do not want to have your quiver mounted here and out here because that is in a working part of the limb. The limb's going to start flexing in these spots here and that quiver is going to impact that by being strapped on there. So you want to get your quiver into the fade outs. Now when you have a long bow that usually means your quiver is going to be tighter centered in here but it is important to hit inside those fade outs before the end of that line comes out and the end of that line comes out on your bow so that you can uh, you know so it's not going to impact the way your arrows or the way your bow shoots by having that on there. So a uh, little tip for you just an important one but and you'll also notice that I run mine I have this pushed up. I have mine pushed up. So I'm at the top of the fade out is what actually sets my position on my bow. Okay, it's not centered on the handle. I do that on purpose. By putting this up as far as I can while still being in the fade out, okay, where I'm not in a flexible part of the limb, it's not interfering with the way my limb functions. But by putting it up as high as I can, it gets that out of my sight window. So this piece right here, when I shoot, is out of my sight window rather than it being like right here. If I were to center that, that's in my vision and bothers me. So by moving this one up, putting this up as high as I can, as far as I want to. You notice I still got fade out sticking out there. But by putting it up there, um, then it gets that more out of my way when I shoot and I don't have to worry about that. So I like that positioning of a quiver on my bow. Um... As far as the setup, sorry, I got stuff on tables everywhere here. I got a pack dump coming up. I just washed my packs. I got a million things going on. Um, but now with your quiver too, um, you can modify pretty much every quiver out there. If the if the original inserts that are in them, this is not either. But if this foam, if they come with preset holes and they don't line up for you, especially if you're like me and you shoot big, fat, tall. Uh, feathers like I do these high back feathers they're not going to probably fit very well in your quiver so you may want to change the foam out also you'll notice that this like on my bow here it is a great northern five arrow quiver okay great northern five arrow quiver and I have in mine six arrows in there if you count them uh, the great northern quiver what I love is the fact that they have this little nook right in here I've shown this before okay but if I pull this arrow out move it out of the way but see this little nook right here this little pinch point it works perfect for an arrow to stay in there and stay stabilized and it is the exact distance for some reason for to connect a piggybacker here which is what this piece is and have that go in there and it's going to drop right into that notch and keep that arrow stable right there. So I actually, with a piggybacker, this little piggybacker adapter that you're seeing right here, lets me make that an actual six arrow quiver out of a five arrow quiver. Uh, I've been shooting it that way now for about probably 15 years and I love it. It works incredible, but it gives me six arrows in the span of five here. Works really, really good. Now, another tip for you is to, um, you can modify your hood foam, so if you're going to run six arrows, they're not going to line up with your preset hood foam holes. You're going to want to use your own foam. So when you use your own foam, the stuff that I use, they don't make anymore. At least I have not found it. Uh, but it was an old Blue Ridge white archery target, about three inches thick and about yay big like this. And they were made for kids. Walmart used to sell them for like $12. And I bought a few of those, but I took a, I'd take a chunk of that which is what you're seeing in here. This white quiver foam is that material, that target. Uh, so I take it and I cut it up into the size and shape I need based on the original one that was in there. And then I fit it in there and then I can make my own holes in it. Uh, so that's what I've done. And this one here too is set up for six. Not only is this one set up for six arrows, this is set up for six and a half. Okay, this is my spare quiver. It rides in my truck with me if I need it for spare arrows and stuff. But uh, we have five arrows in here. 
Plus I have that spot right there for a sixth arrow that would line up with that piggybacker notch right here. You'll also notice there's a cutout right here, a slice right there for another one. That is where I could just take another head, for example, uh, let's just take one of these here. So I could take this, and let's pretend that this one was still in there where it should be. And pretend that we had that sixth arrow in that sixth arrow spot with the piggybacker. I could take this, spinning that out of the way here for, let's just take my tab off of there. Notice I carry my tab on my judo arrow, okay? It just pin pinches it between here and the bottom. That way I don't ever lose it. But so we have our arrows in here this way. I could take a sharpened broadhead like this, stick it right in here and have it tucked in. And then I have a spare broadhead that just stays in there. It's just slid in there and set in there and it's not going to come out. But if I were to shoot at an animal and miss, and say I, I go down and I pull that arrow out of the dirt, I could pick that arrow up, take that old or that dulled broadhead out, and then I could grab this one out of here and put the, you know, I could swap these out and have a good functional brand new uh, razor sharp arrow ready to go again, put the other broadhead back into that spot. So life was good. So simple and easy. Uh, so this was actually set up as a six and a half arrow quiver. Uh, this is my original the Great Northern Quiver. This frame is over 25 years old, probably closer to 30 years old. I've changed the grippers, I've changed the straps, I've changed the hood out to that Northern Mist one when he came out with those. Uh, like I said, it's, but the frame, frame is 30 years old and been on my bows ever since. It's been working amazing. Um, so it's kind of that kind of setup. Now, since they don't make that foam anymore... Your next best option is one of these, a yoga block, okay? These things work really good. They're very uh, they're very lightweight, but they're also very dense, and they're kind of self-sealing, and they work good, and they hold your arrows well. Um, this one here I have not actually used with this one with the uh, foam, but that's yoga foam that's in there. That is that same off of a different block yoga foam that I have pushed in there, and then once I set this, it'll be the same exact kind of way. Um, so you can I can figure out where I want to put each arrow hole on my own to give me that five or six or six and a half arrow setup in there. But I want a light colored foam. I've said this before. That way I can see it um, in the dark at night when I go to put my arrow back in. I can see. That's why I have always used the white. Okay. It's not going to alert animals or anything like that, but it's just smart to have a white foam so in the dark you can put your arrow in and out. Um, so I like that, but the gray, this light gray is a or a light blue or something is going to work just fine. You just want a nice light color. Now, I also want to show you the difference in these hood sizes. Okay, if we look at this, we have a regular hood and we have the long hood. Okay, Great Northern makes this. Now, a lot of quivers are longer, shorter, but you want to keep in mind if you're what broadhead you're using. If you are using a 3 to 1 ratio head, you are going to want a longer hood so that you can get your broadheads all the way up inside of there. If we pull an arrow out of here, we'll take that Magnus, for example, that one we just showed, and we look at this on here. Now, these fit perfectly in here because they work, but to put it into perspective, okay, you look at the size of that as that goes in, Okay, it's filling that whole quiver completely full with that Magnus head. Had these been a little bit longer, okay, that could start to be an issue. Or if I wanted to put them in, you know, I mean, you can see how that can be, you know, this, this hood design, this length, if you start shooting really long broadheads can be a problem. Well, if we look at this one here, which is the same exact quiver, again, let me set that out of the way so I don't get cut. Hold on. Put this here. These are, again, the identical quivers in a long and a short version right there. Same exact quiver. Long one and a short one. Now, when we look at that arrowhead in this one, you can see that we got a lot more room to work with. Okay, a tremendous amount more room to work with. So, um, I think the long hood is the way to go. I, I won't I don't think I'll buy the short one again. Now, I have not used this one yet. I bought it about uh, two two or three years ago, maybe even four years ago. I just haven't used it yet because you just can't wear these things out. And in the meantime, I love using this one, and they do fit my heads in there perfectly. I put them in about that far. It works fantastic. But point being, um, you know, like, and I mean, like I said, they go, it, it, you know, you got a lot of room in here. Just uh, it depends on the head size. You start shooting those big three-to-one ratio heads, and uh, running them in here, uh, you might find yourself in a little bit of a pickle trying to get them all the way in, and you might end up with a head that sticks out that far because you can't get them all the way up into these. So just keep that in mind with this type of heads you're going to be shooting 
to make sure whatever quiver you buy and whoever makes it that you got enough hood size to fit these new uh, a lot of the modern heads or heads that are used today are a lot longer so just let that be something to think about um but I'm gonna put this back together here but as far as the quiver, you know, I, I love the Great Northern Quiver, but there's a lot of good ones out there. Selway makes a great quiver. Um, Creekwalker Trading makes an amazing quiver. If I was not shooting a Great Northern and didn't already have, this is one, two, three. I showed you the one in the bin. I got four of these Great Northern Quivers. Um, two of them that are personalized to me for, for my son. And uh, so, and these ones actually have his ashes inside of these up underneath there in the hood foam on both of these quivers so he's always out there with us or with me but if it wasn't for me having to stick with a um you know or, or staying with a great northern because i love them so much i would be shooting uh probably a creek walk, walker uh trading quiver i love the quivers donnie builds they're just they're incredible uh but like i said there's a lot of great companies out there making quivers selway one of my all-time favorites uh they make a lot of fantastic ones great northern absolutely amazing creek walker trading absolutely amazing um the ones that uh uh, Mark makes down there at Omnivore Quivers. If you want a hip quiver, his hip quivers are, are top shelf on every kind of level. Uh, Gunshy Archery makes some really cool ones, especially for your recurve shooters uh, or things like that too. I mean, they're, they're great for anybody, even on a longbow. Um, but there's so many great quiver options out there. That's just the purpose of you picking the one that's going to matter most for you setting it up how you want but do not be afraid to alter them or change things around changing the hood foam out making sure you get it mounted in a position you know people have commented to me many times your quiver is not centered on your bow i know it's not centered on my bow it's not centered on purpose because i want this out of my vision as much as i can yet i still want it inside the fade outs where it's a non-flexing or working part of the limb i have that set up that way and like i said i've been shooting it that way for 30 years i'm not changing it works flawlessly for me and i don't take my quiver off but still i am in the safe zone if you are inside of these lines from here to here you are in the safe zone of that fade out where you are actually still connecting to the actual riser not to the working part of the limb okay so let that be important lesson there for you when you're setting it up um and uh and like i said you can see here how i carry that judo or that uh my tab see it's trapped between here and the end so that way it's always on the bow always handy always with me so just a little quiver tip for you on some of the things but definitely a good option these these are on amazon i'll put links to them below uh but these uh um, these yoga blocks are dirt cheap they're like seven bucks a piece and you can probably get four or five quiver hood you know obviously look at the size here you can get a bunch of them out of it uh they got the right height so you're going to be good all the way so um like i said they work fantastic for a hood foam this is what i recommend now since the stuff that i use is not available i think i got enough left to make probably three or four more hood foams but i'm already just started going right to the yoga block i think the yoga block is gives you everything you want and it's going to actually hold your arrows tighter than this foam is here on this one. Um, these don't do a bad job and they work good, but this white foam, that target foam I've been using all these years, I honestly believe that the yoga foam, because I had that in this one before when I showed you before we bought that one, I had yoga block in there um, and we were testing it out. I pulled it out and then I had it in this one for a while. It works really good. I like the yoga foam, I think actually better than this stuff here. So, but I love the fact this is white. If I wish somebody would make a white yoga block, that would be excellent, but I have not yet seen a white yoga block. But if they did, that would be golden. Um, but that's the best thing I got for you as far as the quivers and hopefully it helps you set it up and keeps you from having your bow get all out of whack or, uh, uh, you know being able to personalize it your way but like i said five arrow quiver and i can turn it into a six and a half arrow quiver don't be afraid to, to improvise change things up modify a little bit lots of options out there so thanks for watching